Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The Holy Father Pope Francis has prayed for the thousands of victims of clerical sexual abuse in France and urged the Church in the European nation to embark on a path of redemption. The Pope expressed great sorrow over a report that came after a four-year-long investigation to child abuse in the French Church. The report says that as many as 216,000 children were abused by priests since 1950 and more than 100,000 children suffered abuse at the hands of lay employees in church-run institutions. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, October the 5th, Matteo Bruni, who heads the Vatican Press Office, said the Holy Father's thoughts go first to all the victims, with great sorrow for their wounds and gratitude for their courage in reporting the abuse. He also said the Pope prayed that the Church in France finds a path of repentance and reform. The report was prepared by an investigation committee led by senior civil servant Jean-Marc Sauvé. A young Catholic and pro-life supporting politician has become the new Premier of the Australian state of New South Wales. 39-year-old Dominic Perrottet is the youngest politician to serve as the Premier. The father of six is vocal about his opposition to abortion, same-sex marriage and the use of gender-neutral language. In 2017, he had opposed same-sex marriage, saying that marriage is about every child's fundamental right to grow up with their father and mother. He also protested against the decriminalisation of abortion in New South Wales, arguing that he could not support laws that stopped the beating heart of a child. Perotet was educated in a school run by those associated with Opus Dei. Speaking about his faith, he said that it inspires him to make a difference wherever he goes. Bishop Richard Moth of Arundel, who chairs the Department of Social Justice of the Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, has invited all parishes to take part in the annual Love Christmas Initiative to provide one million boxes of food and other essentials to the needy and the vulnerable. Love Christmas is an ecumenical initiative aimed at helping the poor and needy during Advent. It's coordinated by Divine Renovation, Catholic Voices and the Youth Ministry team. The Bishop said that the Boxes of Hope and Love help people across the country who are in need during the pandemic crisis. He also said that they will help people who are isolated and vulnerable. Last year, Love Christmas was able to provide boxes of food to some 770,000 people with the participation of 2,275 Christian churches. As the abortion debate gains momentum in the United States, yet another outfit has announced its fight against the practice. On Friday, October the 1st, the Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising announced its challenge to the prevailing narrative on women's rights and abortion in front of the US Supreme Court. The outfit is led by Teresa Bukovinats, who previously led Secular Pro-Life, Democrats for Life and Pro-Life San Francisco. Chanting outside the court, the group said that abortion takes advantage of the innocent, wounds the weak and benefits the rich. Bukovinats said abortion does not mean progress, adding that they will reclaim what they call the progressivism for life. During the event in front of the court, activist Heather Suarez said that the outfit was created to break the stereotype that pro-life advocates are what she termed old white men. Over half a million Americans have signed the online moral outcry petition asking the US Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, the case that decriminalised abortion in 1973. The petition campaign was launched by Students for Life of America and the Justice Foundation on Monday, October the 4th, after a prayer vigil outside the US Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. Tina Whittington, Executive Vice President of Students for Life of America, stated that every child born or unborn has a right to life granted by God and that the organisation is the face of the signers who are urging the Supreme Court to do the right thing and protect the lives of the unborn. The World Food Programme, or WFP, as well as UNICEF, have reported that 3.2 million children below the age of five in Afghanistan are on the brink of acute malnutrition. This comes after representatives of the two agencies undertook a visit to the crisis-hit nation. Out of the 3.2 million children, as many as one million are at risk of death because of the lack of nutritious food and immediate medical intervention. The report on the children in Afghanistan was released by Er Ludovic de Lis of UNICEF and Mary Ellen McGrorty of the World Food Programme after their recent visit to the country. 
It is estimated that 14 million people in Afghanistan are facing an acute shortage of food ever since the Taliban overran the country and seized power. The WFP surveys report that 95% of Afghan households are not consuming enough food and that adults are sacrificing meals to provide more food to their children. The head of the National Institutes of Health in the United States, Dr. Francis Collins, who is also an outspoken Christian, has announced his plans to step down at the end of the year. The National Institutes of Health is one of the world's largest scientific and clinical biomedical research sponsors. Dr. Collins was the longest-serving presidentially appointed NIH director. He was appointed by President Barack Obama and he went on to serve under three presidents. During his 12-year tenure, the NIH collaborated with pharmaceutical companies to help develop an authorised COVID-19 vaccine. However, Collins, a member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, held views that differed with those of the Church with regard to fetal tissue from aborted fetuses being used in research. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.